Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Team Expansion's Women in Power August call. Happy Women's Month to all the ladies around the world and gentlemen on this call, to your very special ladies in your life. We are wishing you a very happy, impactful and empowered month of August. So I'm gonna kickstart this immediately. We are live in the Team Expansion Facebook page. So you definitely wanna get all your teams onto this call. And I'm gonna be handing over to Shanae Boyson all the way from Pretoria in South Africa. And I just wanna make sure that Shanae is on the call. If you can hear us clearly, if everybody can just put something in the chat bar for us, let us know where you're jumping on from. And Shanae is ready to take over. Shanae, it's a blessing to have you on the call. Thank you so much. Hi Sally, thank you so much for the introduction. Every single person on this call, welcome on this call. And I'm excited to be sharing some nuggets with you. And we've got power packed ladies. We've got a great lineup. So I'm sure that you're going to get a whole afternoon of worth for yourself, for your team. So I'm going to kick start it off immediately so we don't waste any time. But thank you so much once again for being on this call with myself and all of the others. So I just quickly want to say if you can just help me just share screen there, please. Then we can show you guys some. Of what I want to talk about today. So I just want to make this share screen. It's not going public, so the host must just, if you can just let me do that from your side. Shana, give me one minute. Okay, thank you, Sally. Just gonna go. Okay, perfect. Let's see that. Perfect. Thank you so much. Let's see if that works. So you can all see the screen, right? Yeah, perfectly. Perfect. Let's get this started. All right. So guys, welcome on this call this afternoon. Once again, you know, super excited to be sharing with you what we've been working on Women's Month. And you know, it's August, so we're getting closer to summer. I know you want to get everything ready. You want to end off the year, you know, in a magical way. You want to start and have the big, big end in your teams and your organization as well as your physical life. So what I'm going to speak to you guys about is, you know, your mind over matter. It's basically, you will never all be motivated. So you must learn to be disciplined. And what I mean about that is, you know, you have goals at the end of your life. You have something that you want to achieve. You've got your why. You've heard about all of this. You know, your why, what hurts you? What is the end result that you want to achieve? And for me personally, that's, you know, always thinking ahead, always having the end in mind first before we get started. Because if you don't have the end in mind, you know, what are you working towards? What are you working for your goals, what are you pushing in, putting in, and you know, what are you doing to get to that result? So between goals and your achievement, that's where you have your discipline and your consistency. So those two really work together hand in hand. And discipline is one of the key elements of success in every single area of your life, whether it's working out, whether it's, you know, eating properly, whether it's, you know, building a big organization and it's whether it's empowering. So each and every area of your life, that is, you know, what you can take hold and impact it and work it towards. So without discipline, literally guys, there's no sustained achievement. And that's what I've seen in anything that we've done because goals cannot be achieved without disciplines. Dreams will not become reality without discipline. That's not just what I've been saying. That's really what, you know, all of the people out there that's fat scientists have proven this, that you have to have an end in goal. And what I want to talk about is one of the tests that was conducted when it was with children where they actually told them they're going to give them one marshmallow, put the marshmallow in front of them, and they cannot eat the marshmallow. Let's say in about 10, 15 minutes, they're not allowed to have that marshmallow. But after a few times, if they come back and the marshmallow has not been eaten, they're going to have a bigger reward. So that's where your discipline comes in, you know, where it's not just children, it's you as well. Where Are you going to be disciplined enough to go through the torments of, you know, you want to eat that marshmallow so badly, or you're going to go through the torment of, you know, your teams are falling out, people, 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 people are 
putting in all the effort. And at the end of the day, if you're going to go through every single obstacle, you're going to go through every single, you know, negativity, every single media, people leaving, if you're going to go through all of that, at the end of the day, whatever falls out will be replaced with so much better. We've seen that time in and time out again, where people have left and then we've been given new leaders who are stronger doing it faster than ever before. So that's where discipline come up. You might wake up and say, but I don't want to do this business anymore. You want to feel that you're discouraged. You don't want to do this. You've got lack of energy, lack of motivation, but that's where the marshmallow test comes back in. Are you going to push through and wait for the time to pass and, you know, do nothing? Or are you going to literally go and work through that and have a bigger reward? Because when, the parents came back and they saw that their children have not eaten the marshmallow. They were given a bowl full of marshmallows. So they were given a reward. And that's where you can come in, where it's not easy. Most people are going to choose the easy option. 99% of the people always choose the easier option. And that's where you're going to ask yourself, are you going to be part of the stats, part of the 99%? Or are you going to be one of the 1% that make it happen, that push through, that never give up? Never understand the easy option that almost always leads to a hard life later. I mean, guys, if you're going to give up now, you're always going to have that question in the back of your mind where, um, what if? What if I was disciplined enough and pushed through? What if I actually started and said, you know what, I don't want to quit now. You're always going to have that what if mentality in your back of your mind. So successful people do whatever it takes now to ensure an easier life later. Guys, if you are working out for me as well in the gym, you've got a meal plan you don't like, you're going to push through that meal plan. You're going to push through the hard work in the gym. At the end of the day, when you see what you've achieved, you're going to forget about the hardship. You're going to forget about the times that were tough, the times when people left. You're going to forget about all of that. The moment when you walk on that stage and you get recognition in front of thousands of people, you're going to know it's worth it rather to have that discipline because you're not always going to be motivated to phone someone, text someone, you know, motivated to tell people about travel when we've got Corona. But at the end of the day, you know, things are opening up things are changing and are you going to stay where you are or are you going to better yourself? Sacrifice now, enjoy later. Discipline now for a better life later. And that's what we've done when we built this organization. We sacrificed, we miss a lot of birthdays, we miss a lot of events, but at the end of the day, now we've got more time to spend with them, but still, you know, we've got bigger leaders, bigger teams because we've pushed through. We made sure that, you know, Yes, we weren't always motivated. I was not always motivated waking up and saying, yeah, I'm so, I'm so excited to do this. But I had the discipline. I had the end goal in mind to tell me, hey, you know what? If you want to become a successful entrepreneur in any business, if you want to have success in life, doesn't matter what, you're going to have to work through this. You're going to have to go through the obstacles to have that end goal in mind. And that's what we have to do. So, I'm just going to give you three, nuggets, three numbers. So number one, those who lack discipline in any area have not made the end result important enough. How important is this business for you? How important is, you know, this area, this career? How important is this life for you? Do you want to have your children go to university? Do you want to have the struggle end? Do you want to be the person that can help your parents, you know, pay their, um, what do you call it, their medical aid? Do you want to, you know, actually just help people out, then you have to have to change your end goal. What is your end goal? What is the results that you want to have? Write it down. Make sure you always, I always say, write down your goals, put a date next to it because otherwise it's just something that you write on a wall. It's not going to mean anything to you. The number two, the people that fail to maintain a disciplined lifestyle don't know what they are doing it for. Again, guys, that's your end goal. What are you doing it for? Who are you doing it for? And they have no goals, no target, no end result. It's just like the marshmallow test that I've told you about. If you haven't linked it in your mind, the better result coming in the future, you most likely be one of those stats, the 99% that takes the easy road out. That, you know, you're going to be the person that say, I'm not going to meet my goals. I'm not going to meet the deadlines. 
Be the person that meets your goals and meets your deadlines because it gets easier every single time you do it. If you're disciplined, you wake up and you write down your names list, you go through your goals, you go through the list of people that you want to phone for that day, then you're going to see results. I know my parents-in-law, they always said they're not going to go to bed if they have not shown this organization to at least three people. If they've not shared this with three people, they're not going to bed. So guys, you know, it's the goals that's going to suit you. If you're going to make it a little bit harder, you know, it's going to be worth it at the end of the day to achieve it. If you're going to make it super easy, it's not going to be a goal and it's not going to be pushing you to become better. Then number three, those who lack discipline fail to make the goals a priority. This is a priority. This business is a priority because this business can unlock so many doors for you in any area of your life. And if you can do this, you can do anything. And that's what, you know, make your goals meaningful. You won't always be motivated. Trust me, you won't always be motivated. But if you, like for me in winter, I don't always want to train. But what do I do? I put on my gym clothes. Mentally, I'm already in the gym. Mentally, I'm switched on. So just do the workout and get it over and done with. At the end of the day, I feel so much better. That's exactly with this. Phone the person, make the list. At the end of the day, oh, I'm getting over that obstacle of phoning someone. Texting, yes, you can, but you know, texting at the end of the day just gives that person a reason to think long, a reason to come up with an excuse. Whether you're phoning them, they don't have the time to do that. So guys, go through that. And when your results improve, your desire to grow will rise. Really, guys, if you go through all of these obstacles for me now, it's really that I want to keep on pursuing this. I want to keep on doing this because now it's not just for me. Now it's not just for my family, but it's for every single person out there that I know that I can just put something into their heart, into their life, and they can become me. They can become me in a way that, you know, not me physically, but they can become me, the person who changed their lives, helped their family, helped their friends. That can be you. If you just put in the effort at the end of the day, you know, you're going to see that you're going to meet every single goal that you have, every single desire that's going to be opened up. So self-discipline is a key ingredient to your success. Really, really important. It might be the most important fact. So conquer yourself and show your discipline. And I love this shirt because I love this caption. You wonder why I do this. I wonder why you don't. So that goes both ways. For me, it goes for the gym. It goes for building this business, building this empire because A lot of times people look at you and they think, oh, why do you do network marketing? Why do you do this? Why are you always traveling? Why aren't you? And that's why, you know, I'm like, why don't you? Because it's changing my life. It's making me feel better about myself. It's me helping others out there. So why not be disciplined? I want to be that girl in that picture. I want to be strong mentally, physically. I want to be that person that can say, you know, you can bring on everything because I've been through all of the obstacles. I've been through every single curb that you've thrown at me. I've done it because I've got discipline that at the end of the day, I'm going to make it through. When you practice consistent acts of discipline, you are sending a message to your subconscious that you are in charge. You are not being run by a habit or by automated activity like most people. And I want to end off with, you know, you run the day, you are in charge. Are you disciplined enough to wake up every single morning, you know, take the criticism that's been given to you, work harder than ever before, give yourself at least three years, four years, five years, I know is the max that you can always turn a business around. So give yourself that time. Be selfish, be disciplined. And go through all of the obstacles. You're going to get some great nuggets that's going to be thrown at you by a lot of amazing ladies. And, you know, the one thing that I like is that I'm surrounded by people that push me. I'm surrounded in an environment. You're all. It seems that we have lost Sinead Boyson from Pretoria. So if Sinead logs back on, then we'll let her finish off her segment. But wow, what an amazing start to this call. And I love the way that Sinead says, you know, uh, 
be be selfish and take the time to get this done. So I'm just going to wait and see what happened with Shanae. She seems to be kicked off uh, the call. I'm just going to take over and I'm going to share my screen and continue with my segment. Uh, it looks like we've definitely lost Shanae. Uh, she has completely been logged off the call. So I'm going to continue with my segment. So my name is Sally Ensor Smith. I'm coming to you from Durban, South Africa. And, you know, I am a business owner. First and foremost, I'm a female business entrepreneur. I'm a mom as well as I am, you know, very passionate about stepping out of my comfort zone. So just wanted to share my screen with you and uh, share some of the amazing ladies which have inspired me. And because it is August, it's Women's Month, you know, I wanted to just share with you, I'm only going to speak about one of these ladies, but they've all done absolutely amazing things in their lifetime. And the number of women entrepreneurs is on the rise. So why should we have female entrepreneurs. Why is it the month of the year of 2024 is to be focusing and empowering women around the world to step into this role of entrepreneurship? Well, firstly, you know, I believe that females are natural born communicators. You know, we've got a way of communicating uh, our skills and the way we interact with people, you know, and I'm going to give you an example. So if you think about when, you know, kids first go to school and you think about like dad goes to school to drop them off at school for the very first time and what happens is dad drops them off and then he leaves and goes to work and you know the kid just goes into school now when a mom goes to drop the child off at school what happens is she comes out of school with maybe three four five women other mothers that she's connected with that maybe she's hooked up a coffee date with them and that is what i'm talking about the communication skills so you know we are natural born communicators as females so we are becoming better equipped to use our network through those skills of communication with many different purposes in entrepreneurship. Now, um, you know, this follows through onto social media. You know, we, we become second nature as females in social media because of the way we communicate. You know, we like to obviously be on social media. We like to connect, you know, and, and social media is given as a platform for instant communication. So I just want to uh, take your attention to this lady called Madam C.J. Walker. Now, you need to bear in mind that all of these ladies did something completely unique in every one of their own individual sectors, you know, whether it was uh, Sherwang becoming, you know, the number one electronics female entrepreneur coming out of Asia, Oprah Winfrey, you know, radio and TV host, uh, Diane van Furstenberg, she was the lady that developed the wraparound dress and completely transformed, you know, the, the way Way ladies are dressing and obviously Coco Chanel everybody knows her so Sarah Blakely she did spandex and every single one of them went into a portfolio that most people told them it wasn't going to work um, Ariana Huffington is obviously she was in, in newspaper and owns a lot of the newspapers in the USA and uh, she was very much in a male dominated industry but the one that I want to give you some information and background on, and the reason why I'm saying female entrepreneurs, is Madam C.J. Walker. Now, she was born in the 1930s. She is a, a, a child who came from both parents being previously in slavery. Uh, she was born Sarah Breedlow, okay, she was, and then became better known as Madam C.J. Walker. She was orphaned at the age of seven. She was married at the age of 14, and then she was widowed at the age of 21. Now, that's a lot to happen, uh, you know, in a 14-year period uh, from the age of 7 to 21. I mean, that's just crazy. And then for the next two decades, she labored as a washerwoman, earning $1.50 a week. Uh, and then what happened was is that she was actually working for somebody who... Uh, was using cosmetics and she said to them, I want to become a door-to-door -door salesperson for your cosmetics. I want to do this word of mouth and through the people that I know. And this lady turned around and said to her, you're not really the look that we're looking for. Big mistake. Because Madam C.J. Walker 
went on to become the cosmetic lady who started helping other women, empowering other women through her product. And she came across two products. Number one, she developed uh, a shampoo which straightened and smoothed dark hair. And she was originally one of the first people that came out with the ironing iron for hairs. And her company exploded and she became the first black African-American millionaire in the early 1900s coming out of the USA. Now, if she had listened, if she had taken her adversity in her first, you know, from seven until 21, I mean, that was massive adversity that she had and it could have stopped her in her tracks and then being a washerwoman only earning $1.50, she had no financial resources to kickstart her business and then being told that she wasn't the look for the cosmetic industry and, and then also coming up into, I'm wanting to do this in a network marketing fashion, which most people didn't believe in in those days, most people would have stopped in their tracks. And uh, we've got the advantage. So communication right now, we've got the advantage of being natural born communicators for ladies, as well as natural born communicators on social media. And we've got to take this advantage and we've got to start turning it into results. So women have the ability to connect. We also have the ability to ask questions and advise uh, on a much deeper level, uh, you know, blending both our personal lives and our business lives all into one. So there is no better time for us to be speaking about why female entrepreneurship in August 2020, because coming out of this, the phase that the world is in right now, home-based businesses are on the rise and they are definitely here to stay. And it fits a lot of families because uh, naturally women always gravitate towards being very helpful. We want to work with other people. We want to be socially responsive to other people. We caring and we pay attention to obviously the conversations around us. So giving us a platform where we can work from home, still be a mom, still be a wife, still be a sister and aunt and niece, uh, it's giving us all of these platforms. Now, obviously women need to know that there's certain risks by becoming a, an entrepreneur uh, and it's a challenge every single day. Like Shanae said, you need the discipline uh, and this is what you need to know, even if you're not quite ready for it. You need to go find a way to be successful because there's never been a better time for people to step out of their comfort zone. So for women, our time is really short. Uh, you know, we're always rushing around. You're trying to fit in the family. You're trying to fit in your work. You're trying to fit in your personal stuff that you need to do. And we've got to focus on many things while we're at this. So we've figured out a way of getting to that business relationship faster and deeper. Uh, because we don't have the time. So what we're finding is that women are, are literally taking hold of what they need to do and they're running a lot quicker with the businesses uh, than we used to do way more than any other year. And 2020, I think we're going to see massive increase in female entrepreneurs working from anywhere in the world, world and uh, taking businesses from the corporate world back into a home-based sector. So obviously women have some challenges. You know, we've historically, females have never, ever been at the forefront of business. Uh, and, you know, in, in certain communities, uh, from a religious point of view, uh, you know, it, it's quite challenging for women. So, you know, there's certain communities and countries where they don't like female entrepreneurs, and there's a lot of ladies in those countries, and I think that we need to use August as a way to uplift and verbalize and say, you know, that you've got this and it's okay for you to do this. The other thing that we found with, with female entrepreneurs is that the balancing act of, of doing the professional side of, of a female entrepreneur as well as the family side you know there's that whole guilt push and pull between the two and you've got to find that happy balance uh, and obviously the fear of failure fear of fa failure is great but with no failure failure there is no success so gender equality also in the past has played a big part in why female entrepreneurs haven't come through and I think that a lot of countries uh, have completely shifted that that cultural side or that way of thinking and uh, you know the limited knowledge that we used to have I think that social media and computers and Google and all the information which is out there now has also taken away that limited knowledge aspect that women always used to face so for me I'm seeing such a favorable world that we are going into to see more female entrepreneurs coming in so 
You know, the other thing is, is that traditionally women, we were always brought up, you know, don't boast about your successes. You know, you're going to get married and have children and, and, and obviously stay at home. Well, you can do all of that. Ladies on this call and gentlemen on this call, I'm going to encourage you to urge, you know, the females in your lives. Encourage them that they can have it all. You know, in the past, we had to choose between being a professional female in business and then obviously looking after a family and having a family. And you can merge them very well if you manage it into having it all and being successful and going beyond. And this is what I do want to implore on you right now is that, you know, there's a big drive in the world. You know, people are losing their jobs. Companies are closing down and uh, there's a massive unemployment coming. But this is what you can do as a female entrepreneur is you can start your own business, your own network from home. And then you can go and impact and get one, two or three other people to come and start working with you and what's going to happen is that's going to start having a ripple effect and uh, that's what we really need is we just need more people to go out there and realize it's not just about their own entrepreneurship but it's also about going out there and uh, you know really impacting people so I've owned a short-term insurance brokerage with my husband Andrew for 26 years and I've got two children which are now 19 and 20 both studying at the moment and uh, you know we've got the insurance brokerage full-time and we've got a multi-level network marketing company part-time that we've done for the last four years and I just found a way through the dedication the persistence the positivity of the people around us self-discipline as Shanae said being resilient being passionate about what I do and completely adapting and being engaged every single time so uh, I want to finish off and leave this with you as I want you to believe in yourself and I want you to own your success. So I hope that I just gave you some things to think about and I hope that you're gonna go out and impact and realize that as females, we have the communication skills, we are natural born communicators, and now you need to use that to your advantage and take those skills and make it your success. So I'm gonna introduce the next lady that we've got on the call. Her name is Helena Lowe. She's originally from Mozambique. And uh, what I do want to uh, make sure is that she's on the call. Helena, can you hear me? Um. Yes, I can hear you, Sally. Awesome. So, Helena, we've got 120 people on the call. We have gone live on the Facebook group. And if you can share your story, and I'm going to hand it over to you. And I appreciate being on this call. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sally. Um, I don't have any screen to share, so I'll just share my face. Uh, and I want to start by saying uh, Happy Women's Day to every woman who are here, and to the men who are in the call, happy Women's Day for the women in your, in your lives, because there is always a mother, a sister, an aunt, a significant other, so you can always celebrate somebody. As Sally was saying, my name is Elena uh, zifuniash Lo, <laughs> and I'm from Mozambique. Uh, it's very interesting because I work, uh, in, I'm a social activist, and I work mainly on human rights issues with a lot of focus on uh, women and youth empowerment. So for many years, I have been working on women economic empowerment. And what I see is that women do so much, but at the end of the day, they continue to be uh, slaves of their time, like myself as well. So when this concept was introduced to me, uh, I understood the power of residual income. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. It's not to explain to you what is residual income because in this call, I believe we all know that it's when money works for us. And that is a great, great discover if we are able to do that. What I want to talk about is not about how you're going to make millions in network marketing, but it's basically to understand that the residual income for me, it has been an opportunity to have freedom, freedom to have more options and freedom to have more choices for me and my family. Um, I'm a single mom of three, I have five grandchildren, and it was true residual income that I was able to give the best options that I could give to my children while they were growing up. Growing up. And I realized that I have a mission 
to actually share with other women uh, and men how we can reduce the gap of inequality between women and men through residual income. Because when you do it, and when you do it with your family, it actually empowers not just you as a woman, but your family as well. And that is, I think, what we need in a world that uh, everybody has an opportunity, that both women and men can actually cooperate and create an environment that they all grow. Mm -hmm. my, my story with the, um, with the residual income started without me knowing that it was residual income. Because as a single mom, I, I had three jobs and I was running from here and there. But at the end of the month, we were always short of money. Until one day, uh, I, I, had a, a, I was able to invest in a property and I started uh, uh, renting that property. And suddenly, there was extra money. A hundred dollars first, and then it started growing. Has has you actually start having a, a, a different lifestyle and a different relationship with money? Because as women, and uh, I think I'm not wrong if I'm saying that women in this platform may have that experience as well. We are socialized to serve others, and we are socialized in a way that uh, that is a make a make believe that someone will take care of me. When I'm young, my, my dad and mom will take care of me. And when I grow up, I will find that beautiful man who will marry me and take care of me. Yes, you may find that beautiful man. Yes, he might be a responsible person, but life is more complex than that. So at the end of the day, even when you are working outside or having your own business, the majority of your income goes towards the household. So there is no money to invest there is no money to invest. One thing that helped me, it was that by a mistake, I was in a, 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 a talk, an event, where I learned about paying yourself first. And this is what I want to share with you today, because it was true, true the pay yourself first uh, strategy that uh, I realized I was able to create a, a different lifestyle for me even before I knew about network marketing and the opportunities that uh, network marketing brings for us. So, but the thing, the biggest challenge on paying yourself first is that because of the way we are socialized, we have the belief that we do not deserve. We do not, that we have, most of us as women, men also have that, but women have it much more that we do not deserve because we're doing it for others. We're not doing it for us. We feel guilty when we take time for ourselves. We feel guilty when we invest in our well-being. So that was the first lesson I had to learn that uh, I have to be selfish and think about me. I learned the difference between being, loving myself first and being self-confidence, because I think a lot of women have self-confidence. We take families, you know, we, we, we manage households, we manage companies. We, that needs a lot of, of uh, self-confidence. Self-confidence, however, always come with you appreciating yourself because you did something right. And what I learned about paying yourself first is that I appreciate myself because I'm myself and I deserve to be a, a happy, a content human being that uh, uh, can live his or her full potential. And that is what the freedom that uh, residual income gave to me. I never thought I would make millions. I'm not making millions. <laughs> I'm not uh, uh, saying that. However, if you are that type of person who have that type of dream, you do have true residual income, a platform, to actually create that. Why? Because you would only need to build yourself, build the people around you, and by expanding your leadership, by expanding the way you look at others, you help others to see what you see, and then you can move financially as well. Residual income never comes in big amounts. It starts with very small amounts, and it grows, and it grows, and it grows. As you grow internally, as you become more uh, aware of your own needs, talking about your own needs, 
most of the time we are so busy. We wake up in the morning, we have to do the children and do this and do that and do that. And then when the children are grown, we bring the grandchildren and we are always busy, 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 busy. Sometimes you just need to stop and ask yourself, what do I need right now? Maybe it's a cup of tea. And when you're not worried about your financial situation because you have that extra money that the residual income gives you, you will realize how much you love yourself. You will realize how much you have been neglecting yourself. And the more you love yourself, the more faster you will, you will actually grow and you will become a, a, a contributor to a society where we are all creating a common, a common ground of the financial freedom. And again, for me, financial freedom does not say that I have millions. It says that I have options. It says that uh, there is no decision that I'm, I'm going to stop taking because of the money. It means that I take the decision first and then I see where the money will come from. And for women, I know this is very difficult. I have been working for 40 years with women organizations, with women individually, and that is the biggest blockage that we have, that we do not take options for ourselves. So it doesn't matter if you are a single mom, it doesn't matter if you work for somebody, it doesn't matter if you have your own business. Your income, unless you tell it what to do, it gets swollen in the household needs and the needs are bigger. The bigger the family grows, the bigger are the, 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 the needs. So make sure that you pay yourself first. I don't like to talk about percentage, but make sure that you are creating a financial capacity that will allow you to take decisions financially, will allow you to enter into a new enterprise when it is presented to you. I feel very, very, very um, sad when I present this our opportunity to somebody and that person says, I do not have $25 to start as an adult. It makes me very sad. It means that we, have, we are still need to learn about how to build that little wealth that we can have that will help us to invest, to diversify our economy, and above all, to actually enter into a type of enterprise that will create a structure that allows you to slowly, slowly but steady, create a residual income, create a situation where money starts working for you, regardless of what is happening to you. Let that money continue to work uh, for you. Putting, your first, putting yourself first will also help you to see who needs help to understand that. Because it is when you really develop yourself as a, a, a person, as a, uh, a, you fulfill yourself, you do the things you like, that you are, you are going to be able to help others to do the same. And to be an entrepreneur, it means that you are helping people to solve problems and you never know what the problem is. But if you are able to see your own problems and work on your own problems and help others to also see and work on their problems, it means that you will indeed create that financial mindset that you need to have uh, to be able to continue to build your wealth and help others to do that. When I was asked to talk on this, uh, on this session, I was given uh, two slots, so I will just talk about my second issue that I wanted to share with you. Uh, it is about success, and it has to do with the, the, the first one. We tend to relate success with having money, or with buying things, or with the be beautiful house. However, I learned with time, and I learned that from my mom, who was the greatest entrepreneur I ever had met, I learned that, uh, uh, <laughs> that uh, success is actually a process. And success, anyone who has grown up, who has, was born and was able to get to a particular situation, that person is a successful person. The thing which probably stops us is that sometimes we see success as an end, as an end, and it's never an end. It's a process. Because whatever I did to get to a stage one, I need to do something different to go from one to B to two, and something different from two to three. And for me, all that is success. 
the ability to actually read where you are and read what you need to move to the next level. It doesn't mean, and you know, I, I, I really appreciate the presentation of Shane and, uh, and, uh, and, and Sally, because it doesn't mean that you have all the solutions and all the results. It means that you have built the ability to read where you are and to set up where you want to go the next time. That for itself is success. That is what is going to allow you to actually get where you want to go. But you need again to work on yourself. When you find a piece of mind, a, a, a peaceful, when you become a peaceful mind, I'm sorry, I'm translating from Portuguese. <laughs> when you are, when you fulfill yourself, when you are content with yourself. However, that level of contentment, it doesn't mean that uh, you are happy with how things are. No, because human beings, we are always in progression. But it doesn't mean we have to suffer to go from one side to one level to another. And for me, success is when you are in peace, when you are fulfilled, and when you are content with who you are. It's about working yourself. It's about uh, uh, creating or uh, getting an encounter with that self that is deep, deep, deep inside you that most of the time we do not allow it to come because we want to please everybody around us. We want to be liked by this, we'll be liked by that. And if you enter the, piece, the, the, the path of success, it means that uh, you will have a lot of challenges with the people you love, with the people you will encounter. But because you know where you want to go, you know what you want to shift in your life, you will continue to go regardless of the challenges or obstacles that you will find on your way. Uh, it's, it's for me, this process of success, it also, um, uh, how can I say it? It also has also a lot of celebrations. We tend to celebrate big results. And for me, success are all the little results that you do every day and you do it with love. So I would like to close my, 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 my sharing, the sharing of my story, with a, a saying from Mother Teresa, which for me, it has been my company. And I always, every time I am in a difficult situ situation, I go back to this. It just says that um, not all of us can, can do great things, okay? But we can do small things with great love. Whenever you find yourself in a difficult situation, remember that it doesn't matter how small is your contribution. What it matters is how you do it. And for you to do it with love, it means that you have to find your inner peace. It means that you have to develop all those inner strengths that will then start transforming the results that are visible for other people. It, it means that uh, you can make your own path of success if you do everything with love. So go ahead, bring that person, find that person, and build, let, that, that, let love brighten your success path. Now I would like to introduce our next finalist. Uh, she is a very, very uh, young entrepreneur. She comes from an ex-corporate, uh, so she was in the corporate level. She's an entrepreneur and a professional network marketer, a, a globe totaler. I like that because it means that she's always somewhere in the world. And she's an entrepreneur as well. Her passion is to work with women and to empower women. And here we are today celebrating women. Let me hand over. I hope that Priyanka uh, Gavenda, you are on stage. Uh, on, okay, you are there already. So I hand it over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Elena, for that beautiful segment. It was absolutely amazing. Um, you know, a lot of wisdom there, and I really appreciate it. So everyone that's currently on right now, a very happy, happy Women's Month. Um, Sally, whilst I'm actually getting started, um, I'm actually disabled for sharing my screen. So if you could just maybe allow me to share my screen so I can pull up my slides. But in the meantime, what I will do is just introduce myself and tell you guys a little bit about me. So my name is Priyanka, like Helena said, and I am 28 years young. I am from 
South Africa. And yeah, just like all of you guys, I am going through this pandemic and I'm going through my business and entrepreneurship day by day, taking it, you know, day by day, step by step. And when I was actually asked to talk, I'm not sure if you guys can see my screen. If you guys can see my screen, if you could just pop a message somewhere um, so that I know. Okay, awesome. When I was asked, thanks, Ali. When I was asked to speak, on today's platform on Zoom, um, we all had the task of picking a topic. And, you know, women empowerment is something, being a boss lady, and I believe that everybody is a boss lady in their own way. You might not have a business, you might not even know anything about being a, a business owner or business woman, but in our own right, we, we do serve a bigger purpose and, and we all fit together, whether you are a mom, an aunt, a sister, a cousin, we all fit together in this big puzzle. Puzzle. And like Sally did say at the beginning of the call, we are all naturally very talented. And so I wanted to speak about what's currently happening now with this whole virus, with this whole pandemic. I know it's not really the best topic to talk about being in Women's Month because usually people speak about women empowerment and you know how you can take your life to the next level. And I really feel like right now where we currently are, this is something that has been taking a lot of women off their path to where they currently need to be. We all have had massive plans for 2020 and this virus came into our lives, this pandemic came into our lives and it just basically took us all off that journey and that path. And even if you had massive goals, sometimes you know it can play in your mind because you're not achieving that. So don't be your own virus because we are in a world, we are living in a world, we are living in a part of we are a part of history. I hope you guys know that. And so this, with all of this negativity, which we will cover, um, a lot of people are faced with so much more than ever before. You know, being 28, and I've never lived through a pandemic. I know that there might be some people on this call that may have lived through a pandemic before. Or perhaps maybe you have your grandparents or someone that's in an older generation that has, and maybe they've actually told you about it or you've read up on it. But people, People are faced with much more. And what do I mean by that? You know, there's so much more anger, whether you are a mom, whether you are somebody that is in the working industry, whether you're somebody that's an entrepreneur, which we will cover. There's so much of frustration. There's so much of challenges that we are all going through. You know, the lockdown challenges, um, what's on the news? Let's be honest. If you have one of these things, it can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing because WhatsApp right now is just blowing up. We are hearing, I know that we're all women and we naturally love to talk and gossip. And there's, this is the perfect example of broken telephone. You know, you hear something from this person, you tell somebody else, and there's, there's all of this negativity that we're surrounded by on a day-to-day -day basis. What's in the news? The disappointment, anxiety, which is a lot of us are actually experiencing anxiety, loss of income, the stigma of actually having the virus. Let's be honest, you know, you go somewhere and you come back and you have a bit of an itchy throat and, you know, you go into shower, you're having a hot cup of water with lemon we, we're facing this we've never faced this before um the growth of your business and your family so the stigma of having the virus what you focus on expands and our segment's actually very short each each one of us actually have a 10 minute segment so i would have loved to have you know spoke more about this topic but the more we focus on negativity of what's happening around the world that's what we will attract more of. So I watched a video earlier on today and the lady actually said that neg negative thoughts take up seven times more space in our minds than one positive thought up here. So when we started the lockdown, and I know that there's ladies on this call and gentlemen on this call from all over the world, World, not necessarily only in South Africa, but I'm going to speak a little bit about South Africa because we went into the lockdown in March and maybe your country went into the lockdown in, in, in Feb. But this is, I believe, the sixth month that we actually have completed. So it's March, April, May, June, July. And we are going into the sixth month of being in a lockdown, of being in this pandemic, not knowing what we actually want to do or what we can do. So what I've decided to do is, is I just thought of what I did in the lockdown, what helped me in the lockdown, how did I evolve? Um, and by all means, I'm also human. I want you guys to understand that there's no such thing as perfection. The first week of the lockdown was like a Christmas holiday for my husband and I. Uh, in our home, we, when we found out that we were going in a lockdown, because we were we were so adapted to our business being online, even in the past, before the lockdown, we didn't really think 
that we didn't really we didn't really know how this would affect us if that makes sense so we didn't know whether we would our business would actually take a knock it wouldn't take a knock because at that point in time it was really early stages so for us we we did what most people did we woke up late we went to sleep late we watched movies we ate we cooked we baked we found recipes on the internet and let's be honest we were all guilty of that right and then reality kicked in and we're like you know what now is the time now is the time everybody's at home everybody has more time on their hands how can we become better so today i want to share with you 10 things that we focused on and it's 10 things that you probably already have been doing um there's in no particular order you know the whole point of this and this is what i love about the ladies that are on the call we strive we don't strive for perfection we strive to live better we strive to make an impact in other people's lives and so i'm just going to share 10 things that i did like i said most of you guys are probably already doing this or have done this but this is what's really helped us and it's it's given us more perspective of 2020 so these are 10 things um how to not be your own virus right because with everything that's currently going on in the world um think about i want you to think about life 6 months ago because i know they say don't look back at the past but you can look back at the past if it's going to align you and help you be where you need to you can let the past teach you things about the future and so 6 months ago life was normal you know we were all just living life we were going on holiday we were traveling we were visiting our family we were able to grow our business we were able to just grow and strive for success and so when the lock when the lockdown and the pandemic hit us this is what i've been doing more of to actually make this year a normal year and to make every area of my life normal so that i can still succeed okay so do more things that bring you joy I'm not sure what that might be for you um but for me I personally love cooking and I've been doing a lot more of that cooking and baking and it's it's something that just allows me it's very therapeutic practice more gratitude be thankful for where you are in your life and you know I am someone that is really big on gratitude I personally believe that I'm very highly favored and highly blessed and I practice gratitude and practicing gratitude is not just saying thank you you know it's sitting in silence and being being in a state of gratitude for your body for the, the cells that are working on its own your immune system where you are the fact that you know you might have an income or the fact that you still have a job gratitude is something that has just aligned my life and in, in, in another in another aspect which I will talk about maybe one day but gratitude is something that I love by it's like a staple in our life connect with your loved ones get get good at building relationships that's something that I have definitely been getting good at cuz i'm not someone that generally likes to chat like on text i'm more of like a caller so you know do that connect with people and i promise you it also helps you with with your network take your vitamins cuz this is something that you know you might be guilty sometimes i skip a day but i mean take your vitamins i haven't been taking vitamins before as religiously as i am now so you know it this helps with your physical being and your mental being right so we all need that because the last thing we want is to attract the virus and when you are in a space of positivity this is just when you are in a space to grow so please by all means take your vitamins um indulge in personal development and i know that we say this and we maybe if you are somebody that goes to seminars you are part of our network you do what we do on a day to day basis you hear this now is the time for you to watch more youtube videos read more books listen to more audios listen to a podcast you know this is a time now in in this year this is the time that we need to work on our mental health more than anything else and when i say mental health i'm not saying people are crazy i'm just saying that with all the stuff that going on it's really good to have a great healthy mindset and so rewrite your goals and set a date and I did say this briefly but rewrite your goals because I'm going to be honest with you in 2020 at the beginning of the year I did a vision board and half the things that I wanted to achieve this year I could not achieve achieve or i can't achieve because i don't have like it's beyond my power right so rewrite those goals it's okay you can set the goals that you can't achieve for this year next year it's okay to so rewrite them and put a date to them so that you know you can hold yourself accountable pursue the passion and hobby that, that you've always wanted to start spring clean spring is upon us you know on the 1st of september it's always nice to get rid of things get rid of clutter that you no longer need 
have an accountability partner. And this is something that's so important, whether it's a female, whether it's a male, um, this is just somebody that's going to help you be accountable for where you need to be in your life, but also somebody that you can speak to. Maybe there are some, there's somebody that is in a, a similar situation to you and you guys can pick each other up. And then just the last one, I never stop trying and never stop giving up and these are just things that you know i've been practicing on a day-to-day -day basis especially now more than ever because this pandemic has definitely been very challenging and i find that by doing these small things on a day-to-day -day basis um we are living life absolutely normally and and that's the last thing well that's the first thing that you want but the last thing you want to do is live life abnormal like most people in this time so thank you so much for having me on. It's been an absolute pleasure um, sharing the small segment. The lady that I want to bring up next is somebody that is very, very, very special to our team, to our business, to me, myself, and my family. Her name is Marilyn Ockers, and she is a mom, a businesswoman, and she's also a grandmother. She's an absolutely incredible person. She speaks from her heart. She will definitely, if you have the honor and privilege to know her personally like I do, I promise you she is one of the sweetest souls you'll ever meet. So Marilyn, a happy, a happy, happy Women's Day to you. I wish you everything of the best and um, take it away. Thank you. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes, Absolutely. Can. Can. Lovely. Thanks so much, darling. Thank you so much. That was just so refreshing. So yes, everybody that is on the call, I just want to say, wow, what an amazing segment that we've had now with the previous uh, sort of panelists and speakers. Absolutely stunning the information that they've shared. All these women of strength and women that have just got so much value to add to our lives and we're so fortunate that we are able to have this platform and I'm just honored to be able to be part of this platform. Um, my name is Madeline Ockers all the way from sunny Cape Town for a change. The sun is shining here so we're really and truly enjoying 56 years young as Priyanka says um, granny and I'm very very excited about that a mom, a wife etc and a businesswoman. And yeah, just um, sort of very ordinary, nothing spectacular, nothing sort of, um, you know, um, extraordinary, but just that we're out there doing extraordinary things. And my topic today is basically um, the importance of being financially independent. And you might think to yourself, wow, crazy, Madeline, you know, with that pandemic, as you've heard many testimonies and stories now, it's been such chaos with regards to um, people that have lost their jobs, people that have been retrenched, people's jobs that have become redundant, etc. And now you still want me to be financially independent. <laughs> but you know, as women, we are resilient, we are strong. We know how to make it happen. We are, we multitask, we can get creative in the most pressing, pressing times ever. And I think that, um, you know, the most important task any woman can really and truly undergo is the process of identity formation. And this is critical, um, you know, for women as individuals, because in a way, um, we define ourselves in terms of self-worth and we create a sense of self, selfness for ourselves. And this could really and truly be a foundation for our lives. And I've always been one that's been sort of determined to do this. Um, I'm 56 years young from the age of 18, even before 18, I was already working and doing all kinds of things before I even matriculated. Nothing fancy, no tertiary fancy education was always out there grinding, but always determined to be independent. Never wanted to depend on anyone to be able to give me anything that I'm able to enjoy. And you know, owning your own space within yourself, whether you are married, whether you're single, whether you have some sort of partnership with whatever, it's vital because it gives you a sense of fulfillment and it also gives you a sense of purpose. You feel that you are putting in and you are sort of contributing. And as much as men, you know, have dreams and it's not a man thing and a woman thing, okay? It's just that as much as men have dreams and they have desires, so we as women too, we have to fulfill and become that in that person that um, we need to aim to become financially independent. And the mere fact that you are able to contribute, not only just to society, to your family or whatever, it just, it just gives you a sense of dignity. You feel that you just have that certain sort of assertiveness about you. And, you know, we as women, 
we all have personal causes that we like to do, whether it is health, fashion, beauty, working in a community, um, giving back to the community, particularly now, you know, when you have all these troubled times, but we still find that we can still take that little bit and give back to the community. You don't have to sort of get a validation from a partner or spouse to be able to say, you know, can you buy into this because I'd like to do this and something I'd like to do. It gives you the edge when you have your own purse and you are empowered in that way that you can make those decisions without having to always look back or go back and ask. And obviously, if you're in a partnership or a marriage where you're together, you know, two incomes is always better than one when you're actually providing. And I mean, storms happen. There's lots of storms that can go on. Life is full of storms. And, um, you know, we always have to pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off and move on. And um, especially now, you have a situation where your spouse can be retrenched. Illnesses could take him out of the game. Um, like I said, reduction in salary, redundancy in a job, or whatever it is. So it's great to know that if you are independent and you're part of that package and you're adding value to your family and to the existence of your sort of family situation, it just absolutely makes you feel absolutely amazing. I know too many friends and families that young girls and young women that have now sort of gone through marriage and children and motherhood, etc. And those are all amazing blessings, but they forgot to look after themselves. They forgot to keep their identity. They are solely dependent on their spouse to be able to provide, not having a single sort of sent to their name to be able to spoil themselves. Can you believe it in this day and age? Yes, there are people like that, are women like that, that are around, where you're just having to buy the essentials for yourself, where you have to live a limited life on a budget because you don't have that independence. And for many, this traps women in a relationship where in some cases they've relied so much that, um, you know, they haven't put their rubber stamp there. They haven't... Uh, um, in, in a way being able um, to, to actually add value in any way because they've forgotten about themselves. And you've heard of previous speakers talk about being selfish and that is so true. It's very important for you as a woman to create your own financial muscle, okay? This way, the man knows <laughs> that he cannot mess around with you and play games because you're not just gonna be sitting at home waiting for him to make your life happen. He knows that you can go out and make it happen with or without him. Sorry, guys, I'm not picking on you, but this is just the way the world is. And I understand that, look, it's not a competition. It's not about who brings what and whatever. It's about working together and bringing to the table. Um, and then at the same time, you bring yourself and you uplift yourself. Your spouse or partner brings themselves but uplift themselves. And together, you basically then celebrate and you embrace the end goal, Okay. But also what is more critical for women is that you become the role models for your kids because your son looks at you and he looks and he thinks to himself, wow, my mother is a, she's an iron lady. She's out there doing the things, making it happen, earning a keep, doing the same things like my father. And of course, daughters look at you and they just believe that they can, you know, they can have big dreams now. If my mom can do it, so can I. And I mean, what about your personal growth? You know, you need to, you need to, whichever capacity you are in, you need to engage in conversation with people outside of just being at home, being a mother, cooking, cleaning, looking after the children and the wifely duties. It's important for you to challenge yourself as a woman each and every day. As the previous ladies have said, be selfish, okay? It is you first, then the rest that you can impart. Because if you don't actually look after you, and you don't feed you, then what is there to give? There is nothing to give. You, are, you cannot give from an empty cup. You need to first fill yourself. So it's not about being, it's, uh, well, as I say, be selfish, but at the same time, it is important. And I mean, a woman is capable of being a wife, a mother, a good leader, a business person, a public figure, an activist. I mean, Helena's story, wow, I just love to hear more about what you do. That just sounds so interesting um, because you can, you know, we as women, we can balance all of that with much potential. We are the masters of multitasking, guys. We, you can start your own business online. You can do so many things now in the lockdown where 
it almost forces you to be creative and to come up with ways where you can still sustain yourself. Women were created with a destiny to realize all their dreams and all their goals as long as that desire that you have is actually on fire. And we've had many testimonies today. We have many stories that were shared of value on this call. Lots of, 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 of interesting thoughts that people have sort of poured out. And um, I hope that um, some of it has inspired you and, and just to make sure that you are able to go out there this month of August, the month of Women's Month, and just to be a strong, independent woman. That means you are able to find your own happiness and find your groove, okay? You have the self-confidence without relying on someone else for that validation, okay? It is important that you have to find your own happiness and know that emotional independence and it is purely your responsibility and nobody else's, okay? This will aid you to have healthy relationships, to have those fun times with your family during this lockdown. Like Priyanka says, the baking and the cooking and everything. Yes, I've been doing a lot of that as well. Gosh, I've never baked so much. And when it is amazing and it's, it's, it's quite uh, rising in the oven, it's good. But when it's not so good, you know, we just sort of feed it to the dogs. But nevertheless, but very important that you take yourself in a little space of your own, work on yourself, create that happy space for yourself, be selfish about what you're doing so that you don't fall into the rut of being codependent on others or that kind of pattern. Stay safe out there. We miss everybody. We love you all. Walk tall. Step out in faith. And I always say, fake it till you make it. <laughs> and be awesome and know that each and every one of you are absolutely amazing and awesome and beautiful in your own right. And I'm just thankful that I was able to be part of this amazing session and this platform to be able to share. And I know that there's many, many women out there that are making a difference and doing amazing things. So thank you so much. The last lady that I'd like to introduce for our session today. She is a firecracker. <laughs> I tell you, when I hear her name or I see her somewhere or I know she's coming, I just know, here comes that, you know, that energizer bunny that never ever runs out of any spark or any energy and just really and truly learn so much from her. She's such an inspiration to all of us and to our team and my gosh, Dinah Medisa, it is just such a pleasure and a privilege to be able to introduce you to finish off our wonderful, wonderful session. Happy, happy Women's Month to you, my darling. Thank you. Thank you so much, Auntie Merlin. Auntie Merlin is like the mother that we all never had. I don't know about you, she's like my mom. She is the one who's holding us together. So I just want to show her some love. I just want to say thank you so much for all the nuggets, for all the wisdom. But let me also start by saying thank you so much to I'm Dishane Boysen for sharing with us all those amazing, you know, mental, or all those amazing tips about the power of discipline. But what about RMD Sally? I mean, we love you so much, you know, for always being there for us, but also an inspirational content. Helena Lowe, all the way from Mozambique. We love and appreciate you. And Pri, oh wow, let us not be our own virus. I don't know, when I was looking at those 10 tips, I was literally like, I even wrote, so much you know because those are the practical things that we're gonna do so thank you so much ladies show them some love follow them on social media put the comments tell them what exactly have you picked up today i mean they took time today to be able to pour their hearts out i love the power of this uh, platform the power of this team the power of this community so let's all show the ladies that were on call today some love what have you learned you know share them with us we want your story we know that that is actually what is going to impact all of us so thank you thank you so much for everybody who's managed to join us today uh, my name is Diana, and uh, i am so nervous i know <laughs> literally i am so nervous my heart is pumping and I believe it's because yesterday when I was asked to come and talk, I was so quiet because um, 
literally i've been going through a lot of challenges right now i don't know if you can relate to what is going on right now i mean pre was so uh clear everybody all the ladies here they were sharing about us about this i was so vulnerable i mean i'm so vulnerable right now and uh, um i've spoken so many to all of you guys i mean and i'm an excited person but for the first time yesterday i found myself not knowing exactly what i'm gonna share with you guys and it's because uh coronavirus really presented to us an opportunity you see they denied us an access to do outside and then which meant we needed to go inside and do the work internally and uh, majority of us have been forced to literally go and do all the work internally and that's been an amazing journey i mean it broke me down it made me cry it made it made me smile it made me question myself it really made me you know deal with all the issues that i had personally ignored in my life and i'm sitting here in gratitude i'm sitting here in tears because uh we are sharing with you guys and when i was asked to come and share with you guys yesterday i literally wanted to understand what does really women's month mean that's what i wanted to understand because i i i have always took it for granted all these years being a female in this world being a female in this country and i went back and i understood the much those women did you know to give me me today how many years later you know an opportunity to be able to have a platform like this and share my voice it was all those women who marched for our rights who marched for equal opportunities who marched for it is enough no woman must have a dompas you know it's all enough and for me today my 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 message i know that i wrote that i wanted to share with you about how you can actually launch your personal brand or how you can maintain it or how you can improve it which is still what i'm going to share with you guys but i just want you to know that you are enough that's all i want to share with you today you are enough with all your imperfections because after going understanding the history of the of the of the 9th of august in south africa i know we have people that are not in south that are not south africans we have people from all over the world but i went and reread my history the history of my country because i needed to understand what does this mean for me what responsibility do i have what baton am i supposed to be giving to the other young females what is my responsibility to the other female you know when i don't feel like i need to do certain things how disadvantaging am i you know when i feel entitled that i've had enough you know when i feel like i want to cry like i was you know i was feeling like because i felt like you know when i was not even responding i felt like i was feeling entitled not to be able to come and share my story because for the first time i didn't know what to talk about but i felt like who am i who do i think i am because there's someone that today might just relate to the story so maybe instead of me thinking about me and literally nursing my my issues i need to stand up and come today and share with you guys and just say you are enough that's all and we're going to get beaten up trust me all the time this is what priyanka just talked about but the the minute we as women stand understand the power of community the power of when we stand up when we start you know forgetting about our little world and i'm talking to me diana is talking to me today i'm talking about me when i get obsessed about my little world when i get obsessed about i'm not benefiting she's not in my team what do i get when i want to complain about nothing i am actually disadvantaging you because you see this is what i understand if i break this chain i'm breaking you if you break this chain we will not be able to pass this bait into the next generation so you are enough that is your personal brand nobody can ever take that away from you and we must never even let anybody else to believe that you know they are better than any of us because you are enough that's all i want to share with you guys today so but before i'm going to be jumping off quickly there's some few things that i spoke to you about right here's the thing you know along my journey of world ventures we might be having people that are not even part of our portfolio which is beautiful right so i as a woman has always been looking up 
to a male to affirm me. I struggled all my life with uh, self-worth. I did not know what is self-worth. And the work that I've been doing has always been uh, work back towards my dad because I never had a father presence in my life. 35 years, never saw my dad. Saw my dad at his funeral. Some of you know my story. And I never actually went to that. When I was building my business, I was building my business as a female in a manly way. I was too masculine. And that actually took a lot away from me. And I didn't know how to be myself because of lack of my self-worth, right? And I'm here to tell you and reaffirm you that you don't have, you don't have to build it like any man because your femininity, it is the power, it is the enoughness that you have, sister. You don't have to not have time to spend with the family because you are building the business. You deserve it all and you will have it all. That is very, very important. That is your personal brand. And here's the power again. Start listening to your intuition when you're building this business. For me personally, I've never listened to my sixth sense. I've never listened to my intuition. I was just running like a headless chicken. And if you're going to be building your business like that, it crashes all the time. And you have to go and build it and build it again. But here's what I'm learning. The minute you start trusting your intuition, the minute you start continuing to show up and doing what you meant to do it, you are building the best foundation ever. And you know what's powerful, ladies? The best foundation is where other people can exactly know what they have to do. I build with, without teaching a lot of people what to do because how I built the business was not sustainable. I was burned out. I know you need to go there. You need to make it happen. And I'm the one who's gonna tell you to go and make it happen. You don't have to be burned out, quit. You don't. Because being burned out affects everything. Affects your health. Affect, I was in a health, I got a health care and that's not what you need to do. But okay, let's quickly go to three things. I have three things that I want you to check for me right now. Where are you right now? I want you to today to evaluate exactly where are you right now, okay? So, have you already achieved the result? That is the A person in terms of where you said you wanted to be in 2020. The B, are you somebody who just got started or you are a non-starter? And then the third, are you somewhere in between? Tell me where are you today? Because it doesn't matter because you're still enough, right? Because when you come up with your story or your, your personal brand, which is what I'm about to talk about you right now, why do you need to come up? Why do you need to have a personal brand? It's because of that inner affirmation of you are enough, you are unique, there's no one like you. So as much as we can have those three categories of people, right? Telling your story is going to give you what nothing else can actually do, right? So it is very important that you tell your story. And there's four things when you're telling your story because you need to show as authentically as you can. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been in World Venture for six years, but I've only met Dinah in 2020. And I'll tell you exactly what I'm saying. This is me. This is what I know me to be. And because of all this work that I had to actually go through, right? So number one is, who are you? I want you to ask yourself, who are you? Forget about the noise, switch the noise off. Who are you? Who are you? Who's that four-year-old, Marlene? Who's that four-year-old, Helena Lowe? Who's that four-year-old, Sally Andrew Smith? Who's that, who's that four-year-old, Shane Boyson? Who is that? Generally it down. Who are you? Come up with that with no noise because this is the time where you can actually go internally. Number two, why, why, why were you looking for something new by joining World Venture? Or why were you looking for something new? 
opposed to what you were doing before. Why? Because then you are merging the two, right? And then how did you find it? How did you find it so far, right? And then so far is what has it done for you? Be honest and honest into that, okay? So because there's only two things that people are interested in is the story of struggle and the story of progress is the story of struggle and the story of progress and that is actually what is going to help you right so but here's the five things the five last thing that i want you to start doing that i'm going to share with you right i want you to to be brave right now because everything that we all know has been broken down I didn't know anything else about how to build this business till we're in lockdown. My comfort zone of knowing that I can drive to Lesotho, I can drive there, I can, drive, I can be a maniac, that nest was suddenly broken down. The fact that I could pick up a call and call someone and say, let's have a coffee, it was broken down. I want you right now today in this woman's mind to stand up and be bold enough and say, I'm going to do what I've never done before because the last six months has already prepared you that you can do anything, right? And how are we gonna do that? There's five things that we're gonna do. I want, honestly, honestly, I want to see women of team expansion starting to show up. This is the time we need to stand up and say who we are. I don't care what platform you're gonna choose. I don't care what you're gonna do, but hey, we are waiting for you and we've been waiting long enough. This is the time where we need to see you guys being everywhere. We need to see you guys. We are tired of playing this game where we are all behind and there's only like a Sally in the front. There's only like a Priyanka in the front. There's only like, where are you, Mule? Where are you, Kesia? Where are you? Where are you? We need to see you. And we are here to be holding you up and hold your hand because that's what this sisterhood needs to start showing up. We need to really start saying, you know, we are embracing that that is the only way we're going to change the narrative. This narrative is not going to change if only there's only two, three people that are willing to always take the punches in the front. We need to see you guys. Where are you, women of team expansion? Where are you? Where are you? So, number one, that you're gonna be doing is to showing up consistently. I don't know. I'm not seeing you guys on social media. If you are not yet comfortable, great. Do something where we can support you. We don't see you guys. Why not? Where is that story that we are all waiting for, right? And start with the path that is less resistant. Start with what you know you're comfortable with, right? For example, I know that a video a day is gonna, is gonna, is gonna help you in a long term. I'm not saying do it if you're not yet ready. But you know what? Fortunately for us as women to start having that bigger voices, we need to do some of this thing. Do a video, tell us about your story. We're waiting for you. What are you good at? We are waiting for that. We are all exposed right now. And that's why we need you, ladies. We need you to volunteer. This is the month. We need you to see and do the presentation. There's already slots that you are there. Why are you not volunteering and doing a presentation for all of the team? Because we are waiting for you. At what, part, at what time are you gonna come to the party and start contributing? We need that hand because this hand needs to balance this hand. This needs to balance this hand, right? So we need you guys. We need that. This is Women's Month. It can't be like any other month. And from today, we can't be like we were last month. And we will never be like we were last year. Because this is the time when we are taking the baton. And we're going to be moving forward, right? The second thing, embrace imperfection. Yes, you're going to suck. Trust me, I suck every day. And what I do, I cry before I have to do some of this thing. I feel like I don't wanna do it. I'm not perfect. I make so many mistakes. I make so many mistakes. Sometimes I don't even know what I'm talking about, but I do it anyway. 
That's what you need to do. And then the third thing, listen, don't yell. Start celebrating other people when they're having massive success. Because when you start celebrating other people, it means you are opening up the door for you to actually be there, right? Give credit where it is due. Let us see you, you know, let us see you coming up with a story or saying, in this week, this is what you're doing. This is what we want from you. Number four, which is the last one, be a community builder. Be a community builder. Start thinking about value. Start thinking about how much value can you actually give out there? Who is your target audience? Who are those people? What is their pain? Put them in their shoes, get into their shoes. How can you start helping them right now? Forget about the paycheck. Start, forget about the paycheck. You know, marry the process, divorce the results. Be a community builder. Cre create that community of people that you can start giving back because there is power in you right now, standing up and saying, I'm enough and this is what I'm going to do. And I know that there's a diner out there who wants my story. There's a diner out there. You know how many, how many trainings have you been that Makaseta has poured out to you or that all these people have poured out to you? Your audience is waiting for that content. People are waiting out there, especially right now. They want that content. And this is time, ladies and gentlemen, to step up and make it happen. You know why? Because you are enough. Thank you so much. We love you. I want to see you. I want to see it different. We are running a Women's Month campaign, and you're going to run it because it belongs to you. We want to see you. We want to do it. We want to be part of you. And thank you. Thank you so much for everybody who managed to join us today. I'm sorry I didn't know what to tell about, but like, this is what I felt from my heart. You are enough. I love you, queens. I love you, gentlemen. Support us. Thank you so much. We are together. This is what Sister Wood is all about. Thank you. And thank you. I apologize for taking time. Thank you so much. Uh, love you guys. Thank you. God bless. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. We're going to see you. Let's make it happen. You are enough.